Hi traders and welcome back to episode 3 of the questions and answer series. My name is Marco Mayer from Trading Educators. So first of all, thanks to everyone who sent in questions and comments. I picked three questions for today. The first question was sent by Akim. And he asked me, hey, Marco, what's your opinion on simulated and demo trading? Is it a good way to start? So in my opinion, totally, if you're new to trading, the best way to get started is really to sign up for some demo account and get started this way. Pretty much every broker offers it nowadays, whether it's stocks, futures or Forex CFD brokers. You can get a free demo account there and this allows you to make your very first steps. So it allows you to get into the platform of the broker you're using so you really understand it and to test out everything you need to test, see if it does what you want it to do and whether you have any open questions or issues with it that you want to solve and understand. Now, the second aspect of this is, of course, does it help your trading? Does it help you to become a better trader? Or should you start out right trading with real money? And here too, we definitely start off with a demo account, see how it goes and see how you can you can handle this and see if you can be disciplined on your demo account. Because if you can't be disciplined on your demo account, you'll also have trouble trading live because that's when the real emotion's gonna kick in. Now, one thing many traders do wrong when they start on a demo account is that they open up a demo account and then they put in whatever two hundred thousand dollars in there so you can select the amount usually you want to have in and later on they're going to start trading with five or ten thousand dollars which is of course a big difference so my suggestion is to really make it as realistic as possible and choose an amount of money in the demo account that you think you're going to start trading with later on with live trading this way, the numbers you're going to see on the screen will be about what you're going to see later on when you start trading out. But then at some point when you've been on demo for a while and you think it's going good, I think it's also important to start trading with real money and not wait too long doing so. Just because demo trading with demo money is a very different kind of thing than trading with real money and you just won't really get into it before you start trading with something that actually hurts when you lose it so there's a difference if you lose a hundred dollars on a demo account which is nothing or if you really lose a hundred dollars and see how you react to that now my suggestion regarding this is of course in the beginning you probably will lose money as a trader when you start out that's just the way it is so what you want to do is yes you want to go to live trading quickly but do so in a way that you don't lose a lot of money so go ahead maybe and open an account with just $1,000. If you're trading Forex, for example, that's no problem. Go to a broker where you can trade small unit sizes. So maybe you're just going to risk 10 bucks on a single trade. And that's going to be fine for in the beginning. It won't hurt you too much, but it's going to be something. So you're going to take it really seriously. The next question I got from Matteo, and he's asking... I have some difficulties to recognize and trade traders strict entries on one through three formations. How can I recognize if it is the end of a trend and so a one to three formation or simply a correction for trading latch or trading range? That's a good question. Now, those of you who don't know about one to three formations and the TTE, which is the traders strict entry, you might want to go to tradingeducators.com and you can get the free ebook there with the information. So I'm not going to explain the formation now, but just going to answer Matteo's question here. So on a chart he sent me, he marked the one to three low right down here. Now, first of all, every one to three formation is a one to three formation. There's no, even if it's right inside of a trading range, it is a one to three formation. So that doesn't change. The question is, which one do we want to trade and which one are more likely to lead to a, a successful winning trade? Now, when it comes to one to three formations, the best ones usually come after a strong move in the other direction. For example, here, we had an extended down move and then we got a one to three formation right here. Point one, point two, and finally point three. Now, this one didn't result in a big move. Right, if you would have gotten in with the trader strict entry right on this bar, 
you would barely have been able to maybe cover cars so it barely would have taken out the 0.2 here but it would have been basically a nice trade because it happened at the end of a strong down move and so it had the potential to reverse that move now if we compare that to the one two three formation we have below here if you can look at it you already see okay first of all there's there's all that uh, support here previous support areas so here's support here 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 and now what we have here is yeah it's a one two three formation but basically it's just a move back to this lows here and the second thing is it didn't happen after a strong down move if you look at the price bus that did lead to that so this one's here it's not really a strong move and it's already consolidating basically starting here right so we have we have a leg down we have another leg up and then another leg down and this all happens within so like a little trading range here and then now we get a one to three formation so in my opinion this one would have probably less potential than a one to three formation we get here to summarize the answer first of all look for one to three formations after strong moves usually they happen at the end of a trend and that's also when they have the most potential because they have the potential to reverse the trend and then maybe you can catch a really big move compared to if it happens within a trading range probably price is just going to make it to the other side of the trading range and of course look to the left look what happened here again quite strong support resistance level here uh, i wouldn't want to trade right in there to be honest the last question today i got from andreas and he's writing me he's read a little bit more but i'm just gonna summarize it here watching your videos it looks like you're using python to do back tests and get statistical data is that correct and if so what platform tools are you using now what follows will be very particular kind of information about this topic so if you're not into backtesting into systematic trading that's the last question i'm going to answer today and if that's not a topic you are very enthusiastic about you might want to drop out right away at this point and then come back at the next episode where i'm going to answer some more basic questions again so yes while i'm still using genesis trade navigator and other tools for basic stuff like charting nowadays i'm doing my backtesting with my own platform which is what a lot of professionals do nowadays. So you will hardly find any hedge funds or CTAs out there who are using one of the basic retail platforms to do their backtesting. And there's very good reasons for that. And I'm going to jump into a couple of these right now. So first of all, I wanted to have a real good understanding of what a backtest would do, what it would show me and how it would operate actually. So in other words, I wanted to understand what that thing is doing when I press the run button right of course i had a pretty good idea of what that is right before otherwise i wouldn't have been able to come up with my own back tester but at the same time when you buy a platform and you use it you don't really know usually how it really operates right what does it do how does it consider open high low close in what order does it process that data does it just take the whole bar does it start with open then take the high then take the low does it use intraday data to do so if you test it on a daily price chart if so to what extent when does it consider an order field and what price is it going to use so other reasons have been uh, i really wanted to backtest multiple markets and multiple systems at the same time because that is what i do nowadays that's what my trading is like every day i'm going to trade multiple markets with multiple systems so that's how I'm running my trading business and I wanted to have something to backtest it that way. Because what most retail backtesters will do is if you take in multiple systems and multiple markets, they will just run each one separately and then at the end put it together to one. But for example, it wouldn't consider if your margin is used up in between and you can't do anything regarding risk management, for example, of course you want to consider things like correlations between the systems you're trading now another big point was i wanted risk management based on volatility adjusted risk so i didn't just want to run the backtest and say hey trade the e-mini s p with one contract from 2000 till 2016 
doesn't matter if it's 2008 and the market's moving like crazy or it's like it's at the moment where it's a very quiet market. No, because that's not how I would actually trade, right? If the e-mini S&P volatility increases by five times of what it was last week, I'm going to adjust to that. I'm not going to trade the same amount of contracts. And that's also something I wanted my backtest to reflect. I wanted to do that in all kinds of markets. I want to do it in futures, stocks, ETFs, and Forex. And especially for Forex, I want to be able to use whatever data I want. So I have multiple broker feeds running in. I want to take the data where I'm actually trading, which at the moment is LMAX, and use the bid ask that I get from them. Uh, and I don't want to use just the bid price for both buy and sell orders because that's just not realistic. The biggest point probably was that I want to have total freedom to test out any idea that I have without hitting any limits because I can't include it in the back tester or I have to do something very complicated like write my own plugin. And in the past, I always had various ideas where I thought, well, it might be interesting to back test this. But I just couldn't do it because it simply wasn't possible due to limitations of the platform I used. I want to do stuff like um, try out equity curve trading based on Monte Carlo simulation results. I want to have my own optimization functions. For example, if you do walk forward testing, you always have an optimization function that you use. And I don't want it one that just picks the highest results or the best profit factor. And I especially didn't want it to just pick a single peak value. So instead, I now got my own technique for this, which uses multiple factors that I consider as important and that are important to me. And most of them are more related to risk than to profits, actually. And I have it built in a way that it prefers stable areas instead of peaks. Other things I'm doing is use machine learning techniques, signal filters, that are usually not related to trading. So for example, image processing and so on. And that's all stuff you can't do with most of the platforms out there. And again, I really wanted to understand what the backtest does, how it comes up with the results I get, because usually you just click the run button and then you get some kind of screen, but do you really know what it did there? How did it come up with the results? Is it realistic? And while doing so, surprisingly, I found some quite what I consider serious issues in pretty much any of the retail platforms that I tested against. So one example is one of the platforms, if you put in the option that you want your limit order filled only if price traded through. Now this platform, if the open was at that price and it wasn't higher, it considered it filled. So it just used the highs and low, but it didn't consider the open which in my view is plain wrong because if I don't want it to be considered filled if it doesn't trade through, I want it that way. And it also makes a lot of sense, especially on an intraday price chart. Then again, measuring things just in US dollars for one contract, um, which is the default mode in most platforms, doesn't make sense to me um, because that's not the way I trade. What I do is uh, I measure things against risk so whether that's a volatility or distance to the stop and so on, I can put in whatever I want to put in and measure it against that. Another point that's very important, the longer you do that kind of stuff, the more important it gets is uh, trading costs. So slippage, spreads, commissions um, based on each instrument. Now in most platforms, what you do is you just put in an amount there, like let's say $10 per contract for slippage and commissions. And that's it. It doesn't make sense for me because in the e-mini S&P, you will probably have much less slippage than in coffee, for example. And trading the euro US dollar, you'll have a much tighter spread than trading pound New Zealand dollar, for example. So I don't want to have just one option for that. What I got now is I got trading costs per instrument, depending on what I will probably get there in the specific market. And that now allows me, for example, to measure the trading costs of each instrument against its average daily move. Meaning I might come up with a system of different parameters where one of the parameters is trading a lot more than another one. Let's take a very simple example of uh, moving average crossovers. So if you take lower values, you're going to have much more trades. And 
Now I can consider trading costs into that and might decide, okay, in the euro US dollar, I generally want to have more trades because it's not going to hurt me, but I don't want that in pound New Zealand dollar because here I know I'm going to pay a lot for each trade. So that's some of the reasons why I decided to go my own path here and create my own platform. And for most traders, of course, this doesn't make sense because it takes a lot of time. It's very complicated to do and you can do a lot of things wrong. But for me, that's what I do for a living. So I wanted to make sure that I use the best tools I can so that I'm at no disadvantage with the other professionals in that field. And the second part of the question was what platform tools are you using? So again, I built my old platform, but luckily in the world of Python, there's a lot of tools available that are going to make your life a lot easier. Um, so the basic structure I used was to use Python, IPython and Jupyter Notebook. And some of the modules I'm using, of course, Pandas and NumPy, SkyPy, SkyKitLearn, stats models. For plotting, I mostly use matplotlib, Seaborn and Bokeh. And I also use the TALib, which gives you some basic technical indicators, and PyFolio which is a module that helps you to measure performance in various ways, which I found quite helpful. Now, a very good video to get started if you're interested, just with Pandas, for example, to do some very basic prototyping or just to evaluate some data, go to the URL you can see there, go.continuum.io slash pandas for finance. Really great video that's going to give you an, an idea about what, what this world looks like. So that's it already for today. If you have any questions you want to have answered in the next Q&A episode, just send me an email, comment on YouTube or our blog forum. And if you didn't do so, join us at Trading Educators and subscribe to our YouTube channel right below. This way you'll see right away when we post new content like the next Q&A episode, for example. Thank you for watching and see you next time.